We've been focused really exclusively on standard form categorically mediate inferences, those arguments that are comprised of exactly one premise that leads immediately to a conclusion. Both of those statements expressed as standard form categorical statements. These arguments had two terms, a subject term and a predicate term. Well, now things are going to get really interesting. Say hello to my little friend, the standard form categorical syllogism. This is the next kind of argument that we're going to look at. The just like immediate inferences, standard form categorical syllogisms are deductive arguments. That means that they deal in the realm of certainty, not probability or likelihood. In a valid standard form categorical syllogism, the conclusion follows with logical necessity from the premises. There's no way for the conclusion to be false when the premises are assumed to be true in a valid standard form categorical syllogism. These arguments are going to be comprised of three standard form statements, and we're going to have two of those statements working as premises, one as a conclusion, and instead of having two terms, we're now going to have three, and you'll be surprised how much or how much value that third term adds to the kinds of arguments that we make and the complexity of the arguments that we make. And when we get to another kind of standard form categorical argument called sororities, and we can have a hundred premises, oof, it's going to get really interesting. What we want to do for the remainder of this short lecture here is just to get a sense of what standard form categorical syllogisms look like. Here's one for you. All fruit are sweet things. All tomatoes are fruit, therefore all tomatoes are sweet things. We see we have three standard form categorical statements, two of them working as premises, one as a conclusion, and we've got three terms. We've got fruit and sweet things and tomatoes. Now take a look at this argument. Some teachers are mean. All teachers are lazy, therefore some lazy people are mean. Okay, we've got, again, we've got two premises, one conclusion, but do we have just three terms? And are these statements all expressed as standard form statements? And I know you're keen eye saying, no, we've got problems here. Mean and lazy, those aren't countable plural nouns or noun phrases. I can't have three mean or five lazy. And look, you've got four terms here. You've got teachers and mean and lazy and lazy people. You can't have four terms because as we've just discussed, standard form categorical syllogisms have just three terms. So what you have here is a categorical syllogism, right? It's an argument with two premises, and it's about categories of things and how they're related to one another, but it's not a standard form categorical syllogism. And this is going to be really important for us because we can do lots of things with standard form categorical syllogisms to test them for validity, but we can't do those same things with just generic categorical syllogisms that aren't expressed in standard form. So the first thing we want to make sure we do here is we want to make sure we translate our premise and conclusion statements into standard form categorical statements. And I know you know how you do that. You'd say, this is easy. I'm just going to change mean, which is an accountable plural noun or noun phrase, to mean people. I can have five mean people. Same thing with lazy. I'm just going to translate that into lazy people because I can have 20 lazy people. And now we've got an argument that meets these requirements for being a standard form categorical syllogism. All right, let's look at this argument. Every man will someday die. Jerry's a man. Therefore, Jerry will bite the dust at some point. Okay, so we have a categorical syllogism. We have an argument with two premises that's about categories of things and how they relate to one another, but it's not in standard form. We don't have our terms laid out, and we don't have anything expressed as standard form statements. So the question I put to you is this. How do you express every man will someday die as a standard form categorical statement? Did you say all men are mortals, or all men are people who will die, or all humans are people who will die, something like that? Rocks are. How about Jerry is a man? How do we translate that? Oh, perfect. All people identical to Jerry uh, are, are men, are people who, uh, or are human, whatever the term is that you want to select. And Jerry will bite the dust at some point? That sounds like slang for Jerry's going to die. Aha, uh -huh. all people identical to Jerry are mortals. All people identical to Jerry are people who are going to die. Yeah, rock on. Okay, so this is what we're going to focus on. What are the other features of categorical syllogisms beyond the ones that we've discussed here? And that's what we'll pick up with in our next lecture.